The Avatar and the Fire Lord, what the heck? I want to see what Iroh's doing. Jacked Iroh, where is he? It's time you learn my history with Fire Lord Sozin. You oh. need to understand how the war began. Yeah, I'm really curious about that. It would be more interesting if there's some critical point that's character-driven that started the whole thing. So I've been wondering if they're going to cover that. So I'm kind of excited to see what Roku has to say about that. You need to know the story of your great-grandfather's demise. It will reveal your own destiny. Hmm. So we got a slice of life episode at the beach and then a really story-heavy episode. I like how he looks like a monk in the spirit world. Is that just how he sees himself? What does it mean? The fire sages keep the secret history. That was lucky you threw that on the candle. I remember my friend. <laughs> Looks like I went again. Is that Roku? Are oh, that's Roku. Kidding? So it's Roku and Sozin. You wow. were friends with Fire Lord Sozin? Interesting. Never would have guessed. Did something happen to my father? No, Prince Sozin. We are not here for you. It is our honor to serve you, Avatar Roku. Wow. That changes things. Just like with Aang. When Aang became the Avatar, all his friends distanced themselves from him in a way. And he lost his happy existence. It seems like that would probably happen for Roku too. Come on, show me how it's done using all four kinds of bending. Hmm. Sozin seems pretty damn cool, surprisingly. How did he get so hardened and cruel? I hope you're at least allowed to have this. He still wears it, right? This was the first oh, so he is wearing it. That's interesting. So my comment about seeing yourself as some kind of ideal in the spirit world. Aang sees himself with no hair. Roku sees himself with the royal hair clip. Yatsu, you want to see a new glider trick? <laughs> Check this out. That is such an Aang thing to do. Some friendships are so strong, they can even transcend lifetimes. Oh look, he mastered the top elevator. Customarily, my subjects bow before greeting me, but you're the exception. Oh, good. <laughs> On wedding days, we look to the future with optimism and joy. I had my own vision for a brighter future. Together, we could do anything. Our nation is enjoying an unprecedented time of peace and wealth. Our people are happy. That's great, so everything's good, and we don't need to do anything. We can just leave it that way. We should share this prosperity with the rest of the world. In our hands is the most successful empire in history. It's time we expanded it. No, the four nations are meant to be just that. Unfortunately, it was many years before I learned that Sozin had gone ahead with his plan. That's weird. This reminds me of the last video, talking about how you think you know what's best for other people. Making some big change in the name of progress and prosperity, without giving regard to their actual desires at the individual level. But I don't really see where Roku's gone wrong yet. What is his mistake? I've seen the colony, Sozin. Your loyalty is to our nation first. Don't challenge me. It just occurred to me that Aang and Zuko are carrying out a fight between their lineages that's taken place over time. This is Roku's avatar state. Even a single step out of line will result in your permanent end. Alright, so from what I've seen so far, I don't think that was a really good way to show Sozin's transition. His plan seemed kind of out of left field. Like he said he wanted to do it for the good of everyone and share their wealth. I feel like there are other ways to do that that don't involve war and genocide. And I know this is just one episode and we don't have that much time to see a full character arc, but the Sozin at the start of the episode is completely different from the Sozin at this part of the episode. And we haven't really seen any reason for that transition. It didn't feel like a natural progression. It just seemed like power made him corrupt. I mean, that's a thing, but it's surprising. Roku's island was a hundred miles away, but I could still feel it rumbling. I had never seen anything like this catastrophe. Oh, so he didn't actually do it. It just happened. There was no way I could do it all. No, not the dragon. Nice. It's always nice to see the previous avatars do their thing. Need a hand, old friend? Sozin? That's cool. A friend becomes an enemy, becomes a friend. This is awesome. It's Aang's predecessor and Zuko's grandfather battling together. Oh no. It's too much. Don't give up. Please. Without you, all my plans are suddenly possible. I have a vision for the future, Roku. Hmm. 
Wow. That's me, isn't it? Make sense of our past, Aang, and you will bring peace and restore balance in the world. So Roku died in the volcano because Sozin left him there. The Fire Nation's greatest threat, the last airbender. It's interesting to think about Zuko in that light because he's formed his whole identity and existence around perpetuating the dreams and goals of his corrupt grandfather who somehow went astray for reasons I don't really understand. His journey is to uncover that and to figure out what is actually Zuko as opposed to what is Fire Lord Sozen and Fire Lord Ozai. Strangely, Aang seems stuck in that same paradox just by definition being the Avatar. He's completely trapped in the expectations people have of him to carry out this thing and look all these, look at all these expectations Roku's placing on him. It's hard to really put that in, in life terms because we don't have an Avatar but I almost feel bad for Aang because he can't ever be Aang. Maybe that's why the dance episode and things like that are so much fun. But these are two kids, Aang and Zuko, who are battling each other because they've inherited this fight from people before them without any respect to what they actually want or who they are intrinsically or who they are at heart. The note said that I needed to know about my great-grandfather's death. You have more than one great-grandfather, Prince Zuko. Sozin was your father's grandfather. Your mother's grandfather was Avatar Roku. What? Understanding the struggle between your two great-grandfathers can help you better understand the battle within yourself. What happened generations ago can be resolved now by you. Yes. Born in you, along with all the strife, is the power to restore balance. Wow. Okay. So Zuko is a descendant of the Avatar. And I was talking about Zuko bringing balance, which is the Avatar's job. Roku really hedged his bets. He's got two horses in this race <laughs> and they're fighting each other. So I guess one thing they're going for is that Zuko embodies the eternal conflict between good and evil forces. The start of the whole story was Sozin and Roku, good and evil as they're framing it. And they both led to the birth of Zuko, who has this internal conflict inside of him. It's supposed to be won by the crown prince. Where'd Iroh get that? It's like these people are born bad. I don't think that was the point of what Roku showed me at all. Good, I'm glad. Their story proves anyone's capable of great good and great evil. Do you really think friendships can last more than one lifetime? I don't see why not. Well, Aww. scientifically speaking, there's no way Stop. to prove that. <laughs> Sokka, just hold hands. Yes. There you go. Good boy. Whoa, alright, a lot of story there. Aang kind of wrapped up one of the best qualities of the show, which is showing that anyone is capable of both great good and great evil. The Fire Nation is not intrinsically evil, it's just certain elements within it led to the downfall of the world and the war. I really like the idea that Zuko is literally an embodiment of the long struggle between good and evil. His journey is definitely the struggle to reconcile those two inside of him. It's always fun in stories to learn that the conflict is the result of a long ongoing struggle between two forces that are still being carried out today. I think that fundamentally our whole existence is similar to Zuko's struggle. We are the result of competing forces that have played out over time, way back before anything we can comprehend. It seems like the whole world is a quest for what works, and that means there are competing forces struggling to gain a foothold, and we're right on the tip of that. We're born into societies and, and value systems, and we pick those up and identify with them, not realizing that we're carrying out the will of many of those who have come before us. And as individuals, we carry the burdens of our families. And I think that that can be scary and painful to realize, but I think there can be beauty in that. I think that the trick is not to outright reject it or to think that you can ever be outside of that, but to just try to see that for what it is and find a way to make that harmonious. In a way you are everything because you are the current moment of that long struggle, but you're also nothing because eventually you're gonna be just one molecule in that long ongoing struggle. But anyway, that's why I think it's such a nice theme or device in shows when you learn that the characters you've been focusing on are part of a bigger picture. It's always nice to get that feeling of seeing the big picture because that, that's something that's helpful as humans. This goes way beyond just the show. I really enjoyed these two episodes. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I'll see you for the next video.